passengers and polish. Nancy is a guard's daughter. She was working on Carlo with some polish in a rag. Wake up, lazy bones! She said severely. Your brass is filthy. Aren't you ashamed? No, said Carlo sleepily. You're just an old fuss spot. Go away. She tickled his nose. Rene is coming home tomorrow. Don't you want to look nice? Carlo woke suddenly. What tomorrow? Yes, Daddy told me. I'm going now. Nancy, stop! Do I really look nice? Please polish me again. As a good kind girl. Now who is an old fuss spot? Laughed Nancy. She gave him another rub, then climbed down. Aren't you going to polish me? Asked Duncan. Sorry, not today. I'm helping the refreshment lady this afternoon. We must get the ices and things ready for the passengers on Scarlow's two o'clock train. Never mind, Duncan. I'll give you a good polish tomorrow. But Duncan did mind. It isn't fair, he complained. Peter Sam gets a special funnel. Sir Handel gets special wheels. Passengers get ices, and I'm never even polished. This, of course, wasn't true. But Duncan liked having a grievance. He began to sulk. That afternoon, a message came from the station by the waterfall. One of Scarlow's coaches has come off the rails. Please send some workmen to put it right. Duncan was in steam, so he had to go. All this extra work, he grumbled. It wears an engine out. Rubbish, said his driver. Come on. The derailed coach was in the middle of his train, so Scarlow had gone on to the top station with the front coaches. Duncan left the workmen and brought the passengers in the rear coaches home. He sulked all the way. He arrived back just in time for his own four o'clock train. I get no rest. I get no rest. He complained. He was sulky and short of steam, so his driver waited a few minutes in the hope of raising more. But Duncan wouldn't try. We can't keep the passengers waiting any longer. His driver said at last. You always think about passengers," muttered Duncan crossly, "and never about me. I'm never even polished. I'm overworked, and I won't stand it." He grumbled away, brooding over his wrongs. Duncan made heavy weather of the journey, but at last they reached the viaduct. This is long, high, and narrow. No one can walk on it when a train is there. "Come on, Duncan," said his driver. "One more effort, and you'll have a rest and a drink in the station." Keep your old station," said Duncan rudely. "I'm staying here." He did too. He stopped his train right on the viaduct, and nothing his driver or fireman could do would make him move another yard. Scarlow came from the top station to haul Duncan and his train to the platform. The passengers were very cross. They burst out of the train and told the drivers, the firemen, and the guard what a bad railway it was. Scarlow had to pull the train to the top station too. Duncan wouldn't even try. The train controller was waiting at the shed for Duncan that evening. He spoke to him severely, but Duncan still stayed sulky. He muttered to himself, "No polish, no passengers," in an obstinate sort of voice.